Hello. So, I bought RPG Maker and I've gotten used to it, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the things that Unity can do that RPG Maker can't do, um, and why I'm giving serious thought to actually going ahead with my uh, RPG Maker-ish thing in Unity, although obviously it would need a lot of work. Um, the big thing I want to talk about today is events. So here's an event, and we can edit that event. So over here on the left we see there's a whole bunch of options where we can change how it walks or the things that it does and different uh, different times and all that sort of stuff. Now this over here is great but Unity has that same functionality. Uh, it's on the right in my particular project but who cares. It's the same basic idea. Um, by default it looks a little bit different but it's something you can customize. I could make it look exactly like this if I wanted to. What Unity doesn't have is this scripting panel over on the right. Uh, so, what exactly does this scripting panel do for us? Well, this is actually a scripting language with an IDE. Um, now, a scripting language and a programming language are only a little bit different. I mean, they're both Turing complete. The biggest difference is that a scripting language is usually uh, executed on the fly, whereas a programming language is generally compiled ahead of time. In Unity, that is very easy. Uh, you can actually compile C Sharp uh, during runtime, and you're not you don't have a problem compiling ahead of time. RPG Maker can't compile your stuff ahead of time, so that's why it uses a scripting language so heavily. But the biggest advantage of a scripting language is its limitations. Uh, by constricting what the player is actually allowed to do, you make it so the player doesn't have to actually have every single programming concept memorized. You just let them use the you know 15 or 20 commands. The problem is that as you grow, so does your command list. So this is an IDE. Uh, it's giving you suggestions as to what you would like to quote unquote type. Uh, it's 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 not letting you type anything, but it is asking you what you what command you want to use. And once you choose a command, it would actually let you change what uh, what the arguments are in this pop up here, where you have a whole bunch of specific things that you can choose. And we can go ahead and make this an in run by something you know like that and therefore gets changed. So it, 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 this is an IDE. It, it fills in all of the things that you can type so you don't have to remember them. And that gets more and more important as your options expand. Unity also has an IDE. That's this one. Now I give this, uh, I give uh, C Sharp, I mean sorry, I give MonoDevelop a lot of shit, but it's actually not a bad IDE compared to uh, things like the RPG Maker IDE. The way it works is very similar. It gives you this giant list. It doesn't prevent you from typing. It just gives you this pop-up that you can go ahead and do anything you'd like with. And if you continue to type, you can get more and more things here. And we can go ahead and do a oh, rotate. And then we can open it up. And oh, here are some arguments we can give it. And we can go ahead and see all of the details, exactly like the IDE in MonoDevelop, but with one, sorry, exactly like the IDE, IDE in RPG Maker, but with one major advantage. C Sharp uses reflection. And that means that if I add a new class, it gets added into the system. And if that class has different kinds of arguments, they get added into that list. So whereas, that, whereas this list will always be the same, uh, my list will continue to update. So if I were to switch out a battle system in, in C Sharp in my Unity project, this would change. It would have a different set of dropdowns. And I wouldn't have to completely. I wouldn't have to keep defaulting back to this Ruby script here uh, under Advanced because the stuff that I put in there would be available instantly. Now, if you're thinking, "Come on, no one's going to program." I mean, maybe some people will, but the, a lot of these people are not programmers and they do not want to program anything. Well, the reflection is a lot more powerful than it first looks because what happens if I go to, say my friend or somebody who's actually good at programming and I get a battle system from him that does something cool like what I wanted to do it gets automatically reflected into the game so it just updates automatically and then I can access it but you can only access it via the IDE well that's also a little secret see you don't have to access everything through this IDE Unity has a second IDE the inspector window 
So here I've got a battle system I have put into the game. The default battle system is not a monolithic device. Instead what it does is it splits the battle up into logical pieces and then it hands the responsibility for those pieces out to various other specific scripts. In this case I have a move script and I've got a uh, and I've got an action script. So what happens is the move script gets called and then the action script gets called and that allows you to move and then take an action. The default move script there's no moving. It's just you stick around. I mean you might be able to change rows but that's not like a dedicated move phase thing. But if you were doing a tactical game or a real-time game then you'd use that much more aggressively and it would even do things like be responsible for moving your uh, NPCs that aren't under your active control in an action RPG. And you can, you know, you can have that be whatever you'd like. Down here in the battle system, uh, this is the one where this is the action system where it pops up a menu for you to pick your actions from, or uh, or it reacts to you pressing the A button or whatever. Um, and those two things kind of trade off responsibility for who gets to go and when. Of course, uh, the defaults don't really exist yet. I'm just laying it out as an example. But if you go ahead and get a script from your friend, let's say he gives you this battle move system simple script and you drop it in, you can see how it just gives you a whole bunch of arguments and we can change these arguments to whatever we would like. Uh, and this would allow us to do whatever we would like to do uh, without any kind of uh, uh, editing in C Sharp at all. Now I thought that this did tooltips, but it doesn't appear to. These actually have um, descriptions that I'd like to have pop up, but they're not popping up for some reason. Well, either way, the other half of this is you don't have to do everything by swapping out scripts, because what you can do is you can relate scripts without swapping anything out. So for example, uh, this battle action system actually has a number of unity events that get called. So before you get to choose something, you get this event. And when you choose something, you get this event. When the action is completed, this event gets called. And if you decide you're going to cancel and go along to the next person, that event gets called. So what if we wanted to do something special to customize the feel of our combat? What if we wanted to do something that's really hard to do in, in, uh, in RPG Maker? Because I really like the idea that everyone has their own kind of combat standards. So what happens when we want to, um, let's say that after every single one of our actions, we check and we see whether or not that action was a, an attack, a basic attack. And if it was, we reduce your defense because you're out there on the front line. So you wouldn't have to have rows. Anyone who attacked would be on the front line and anyone who didn't attack would be on the back line. Simple, right? Well, that's something you can do pretty easily, but there's no script for it here. What we would want to do is we would want to use this battle system script or perhaps a battle move system which understood the concept of rows. We would drag them in and we could grab it from down here. We could say, well, move system, uh, well, we don't have that function, but if we did, it would pop up right in here and it would be like, uh, uh, you know, uh, change, your, change your row. Mm. Whatever. Um, and it could be anything we would like it to be and we wouldn't have to code anything. There would be hooks available for us to do that. All we would need to do is understand how those hooks worked. And if we get all of that stuff from online somewhere, we get the battle system we would like. There's not, a, there's not an ounce of coding we have to do. It's all drag and drop. The, the, the heart of this, however, is the fact that we're breaking this up into pieces. Now, RPG Maker does break things up into pieces. For example, over here into the database we go. Here are the classes. And you can see that the cla all of this stuff has been broken up into pieces, and all the classes have been broken up, and there's a whole bunch of different things here. We've got items, and they're all broken up into pieces. So it has broken everything up into pieces, but it doesn't relate them using a reflection system very well. There is a little bit of reflection here. For example, if I define more classes, then the actors will have more classes to choose from. That's reflection. Um, and we can do that same thing using a pseudo enum. It's really slick, uh, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, but what they don't do is they don't allow us to swap out the stat system. So we can't get rid of these eight stats. If we were to swap in a different stat system, uh, then these eight stats wouldn't change over to those new stats. We couldn't have different stats. Uh, if we, we, we can have different stats if we like uh, build our own stat system that's not part of this. But it's, uh, it's a lot of work and it's something that's quite annoying to do, whereas in the Unity system down here, 
if we had a stat control uh, system, we would just drop a new stat control object, a new stat control class in there, and it would instantly have the new stats. Um, and it would instantly reflect that over into the character classes that you've been creating, and it would instantly do all of that work for you. Be very, very fluid, and it would let you customize your system a lot deeper. Uh, or you could stay with the defaults, or you could get get something from someone else that does exactly what you needed to do. And that's the whole point of this. Where the stats are just relatively minor, where the RPG Maker system really falls down is that its battles are monolithic. So if you wanted to get a new battle system for RPG Maker, you have to go out and build your own script from the ground up. Uh, and even if you copy a script in from online somewhere, you're still probably going to run into issues, and it's going to be annoying, and you're going to have to be like, ah. I've never really understood why they did that, because I think it's just because they can't do what I've just shown you. But here, we can get a lot of really powerful functionality by breaking the battle up into you know, half a dozen responsible components. So we've got the move system that understands which row people are on and which order they're going to go in and all that stuff. And then we've got the battle action system. And we can even ignore those. We can replace the battle system itself and have it do stuff that has nothing to do with move systems and battle action systems. But we can also put in uh, you know, a damage control system which would understand both things like... It would understand things like death and it would understand things like poison. Uh, and we could create those states in the same way that they're created in... Um, uh, in RPG Maker, which is to say that they are, they are this giant list. Uh, we can do that exact same thing. Um, and so we can duplicate all of, the, all of the places where RPG Maker has broken it up nice. We can also break it up nice. But all of the places where RPG Maker has failed to break it up, we can break it up nice. And that means that you replace the battle move system and you don't replace the battle action system, it'll still work you can go ahead and have a battle action system you inherit from Japanese RPGs and your battle move system is like a first person running around with a gun sort of thing that would work uh, because it because of the way that these systems have been broken out and, and the responsibility has been changed you would be moving according to your move system and then your action system would take control uh, when that came to play when you run out of movement or when you hit a button so that's really powerful and that allows us to do a lot of really cool things using drag and drop.